Hi, my name is Clint Wright. I am the Broadcast Studio Managing Engineer for Communication Studies here at Longwood University, and I'm going to be talking about the JVC GY LS300 series of digital video camera. Before I start, I should throw out a couple of things. There's a lot of information available about this camera. Um, what I'm going over is targeted at our students based off how we use the camera in our program. Also, this cable right here, ignore this. This is just so I can record the menu on a different camera. That being said, let's get started. Now, if you're used to using a different camera like the Canon XF300, one of the first things you'll notice is that there's no lens attached to this camera. This is easy to fix. Remove the cap here. Remove the cap off the back of your lens. There is a red dot on the lens. There is a corresponding red dot on the body of the camera. Line up those dots and turn to lock into place. Once you've got your lens on, the next thing you want to do is turn your camera on. On the back of the camera, there's a battery slot. Take your battery, push it in, and slide over to lock in place. The power switch is located on the top of the camera. Go ahead and move it to the on position. Once your camera is on, we're ready to go ahead and start formatting our media. We'll start with the SD card. Go ahead and open your viewfinder. Slide the little door open. Take your card with the lettering facing the lens. Slide it into slot A. It'll lock into place. Close the door. From there, go ahead and hit the menu button, scroll down to system, media, format media, format slot A, format. Now formatting will get rid of all of the information that is currently on the card, so it'll free it up for you to use on your current shoot. Make sure you back up your card before you do this because that information will be gone and unretrievable. Once you've got your card formatted, go ahead and cancel out and we'll format the camera itself. Go up to record settings, record format. Make sure the settings of your camera match the settings shown on the menu here. Now, I should point out that these settings are not the highest quality this camera can work with. It's just going to give you the most bang for your buck with your SD card, as well as these are the settings that are going to allow your camera to interact with our effects engine and our switcher in the studio itself. So it's not the best it can do, but it's the best for how we're going to be using it. Once your settings are all locked in, go ahead and cancel out of this. Go down to variable scan mapping, Make sure your scan mapping is set to 86%. What this does is it basically pre-crops the image and will allow you to work without having to worry about uh, vignetting or dark corners in your, in your shot. Once that's set, go ahead and cancel out. And we'll start getting set up to record. First thing you'll want to do is white balance your camera. To do that, place a white card in front of the camera. Make sure that your white balance switch is located in either the A or B position. With the white filling the entire lens, hit the white balance button on the front of the camera here. And your camera will adjust itself to that version of white. Now the reason we do this is because the camera has to know what true white is before it can know what all the other colors are. It's just a good way to make sure that your image remains clean, clear, and looking the way you want it to. Once you've got your white balance set, there's a couple of other things you want to adjust to make sure your camera is seeing things properly. Uh, one of them is your shutter speed. What your shutter speed does is it allows more or less light to come into the camera. The longer your shutter speed, the more light comes in, the shorter your shutter speed, the less light comes in. If you're shooting indoors, I recommend starting at something like 1 60th of a second. Um, this is not a hard and fast rule, it's just a good starting point, and you can adjust up or down from there. If you're shooting outdoors, you, you can go faster, you know, starting somewhere in the, in the 1 100th of a second range, depending on how bright it is outside. To adjust your shutter speed, hit the shutter button. It'll highlight the shutter speed, and then you can scroll up or down to adjust your speed. Once you've adjusted your shutter speed, there's a couple other things that you can work with to uh, change the amount of light coming in. One is your iris. Now, on most lenses, the iris is going to be the closest ring to the body of the camera. Go ahead and turn it to your left to let light in. Turn it to your right to darken the image up a little bit. Um, if you are shooting outdoors in July and it's noon and it's really, really bright outside and you need to further adjust how much light's coming into your camera, there's a, on the front of the camera here, there's the ND filter. This is basically sunglasses for your camera. You turn this and it's going to basically filter out some of that bright light. 
once you've got your white balance and shutter speed and all of that set, uh, people tend to want to start focusing and getting their shots set up. But I'm going to say before you do that, make sure your audio is set up because otherwise what's going to happen is you're going to have your shot all nice and pretty and then you're going to go through to set your audio and the camera's going to move, it's going to not be in focus anymore and there's going to be just problems. So the camera is going to come with this shotgun mic right here. Um, I want you to use this as a backup mic, not your primary mic. This is going to create sound but it's going to be kind of dirty and muddy and you know, if we don't, if we can get away with not using it, I would rather do that. On the side of the camera here, there are two XLR inputs, input one, input two. Make sure your shotgun mic is plugged into input two. And then what we will do is we will plug either a boom mic or a lavalier mic or a handheld or some other form of microphone into this input one, and that's going to be our primary source of audio. So today I brought with me a lavalier mic. What you'll do is take your XLR cable here. Plug it into that input one. Plug the other end into your body pack here. Um, not all mics will have that body pack, but in this instance it does. You would then place this microphone on your talent. I'm already wearing one. So this is about the appropriate placement, that dollar bill length from your, from your mouth. Once you've got everything connected, open this little panel up right here. Make sure channel one is set to input one, channel two is set to input two. Both audio inputs are set to mic plus 48V. Now that 48V is the phantom power. Both of these are condenser microphones, which means they need a little extra oomph to, to do what they're supposed to do. Um, a lot of handhelds are actually passive and won't need that, but in this case, we're using condenser microphones. Over here, you have your volumes for both channels. There is an, au there is an auto setting and a manual setting. Go ahead and set it to manual and dial in your audio. If you're looking on the audio meter on the camera here, you're going to want to keep your audio somewhere between that 10 and 0 range. Um, 0 is unity, that's where you're going to start overdriving. 10 is going to start being a little quiet, actually, so make sure it stays in between those two numbers um, for, your, for your peaks and valleys. Once you've got all that set, the next thing you want to do is go ahead and set up your shot and get it framed and focused, and we'll be ready to record. So first thing you do is pick where you want your talent to be. I've got Mr. Burgundy behind the desk. Then you decide how tight you want the shot to be. Um, if you're using a variable zoom lens, you can use the rocker switch on the side of the camera here or the zoom ring on the camera itself to zoom in or out. If you're using a fixed zoom lens, you basically have to just move the camera closer or farther away depending on the shot you want. Once you've got your shot kind of set up, go ahead and hit that expanded focus button on top of the camera. What this will do is it will get you close to your talent so you can get as focused as possible. Your focus is the very end ring on the camera. Once you get it focused on your talent, go ahead and hit that expanded focus again, zoom the camera back out, and now you're ready to record. Hit the record button on the back of the camera to start recording, and hit it again to stop. All in all, this is a pretty easy camera to use. It takes a little practice to get used to it, but after that, you'll be shooting some great stuff. Thanks.